Patty, if you pre-gal, it's Miss Cash. Today I want to work through section uh, 315 for Mr. Passwater's notes. So I think I have my version already posted. Uh, I know I have my version already posted, but I think I will go ahead. He does a great job, uh, well, with a lot of things, but definitely with writing multiple choice. So my notes don't have that. Um, so if I skip over something, it's because I've already taught it in my notes. So you might need to go find my section of 315. Okay, so one of the big things in this section is talking about um, what happens to the distance from the, the curve to the origin, okay? Or we might call it the pole, because we're in polar. Um, you could think you're standing at the North Pole looking down, and, um, and that's kind of the, the grid that you would see if you were standing here at the pole. Um, okay, and so origin or pole are kind of interchangeable. Um, so if the, if the radius is positive and increasing, or negative and decreasing, then the distance away from the pole is increasing. Um, then if it's positive and decreasing or negative and increasing, then the distance is, from the origin is decreasing. Okay, so in other words, like we could look at this graph. I think this matches this curve right here. Um, so can we see all of that at the same time? Uh, we're, here is the rectangular equation. Y is equal to, oh, he wrote it. 1 plus 2 sine of x, or we would have been more familiar with saying y is equal to 2 sine of x plus 1. So its amplitude is 2 and it was shifted up 1. So here is a sine curve doing something like that. Okay, so, and then here is the corresponding polar curve. Um, so this is when our angle equals 0 and our radius equals 1. So those points correspond. Notice it was increasing, it was positive and increasing until we got to pi over 2. Well, so here we had a radius of one, and then my radius is increasing, increasing, until, like, as I move around, my radius is getting bigger until it gets as big as three up here at pi over two. So where is it positive and increasing? Well, from zero to pi over two. Zero to pi over two. Okay, where is it positive and decreasing? Well, it's still positive from here all the way down until it hits the... Um, it's decreasing until it gets, well, it's decreasing all the way to here, but it's decreasing and positive until it gets to 7 pi over 6. So that's pi over 2 to 7 pi over 6. Where is it negative and increasing? Well, negative, here it's negative and decreasing. Let's write that down. So it's still decreasing from 7 pi over 6 to 3 pi over 2. And then it starts increasing, and it's negative and increasing from 3 pi over 2 to 11 pi over 6. And then it's from here, 11 pi over 6 back to 2 pi, it was positive and increasing again. 11 pi over 6 comma 2 pi. Okay, well, let's see how does this right here relate back to this, this polar curve. Well, the first little piece was from 0 to pi over 2 right through here. It's positive and increasing, and notice my radius is getting bigger and bigger. I started with a radius of 1, and then as I they, my radius kept getting longer and longer and longer until it got up to 3. Then it was positive and decreasing from uh, pi over two to seven pi over six. Well, so now I have a radius of three, I'm here, and I'm getting, my radius is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It gets to one, and then it keeps getting smaller um, until it gets back to zero at seven pi over six. Now think about it, in here from uh, pi to seven pi over six, where, um, so pi to seven pi over six, this is in quadrant where am I on the unit circle? This is in quadrant three, and so I do have values that are in quadrant three, and they're getting closer and closer to zero. Okay, then my curve would continue from seven pi over six. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but negative. So from seven pi over six to three pi over two, that's where it was negative and decreasing, but my distance away from the pole was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It, had, it started at the pole, and then it gets as far away as one unit from the pole. Um, then from... So that was negative and, and, increase, and decreasing. Then it's negative and increasing. Negative, nope, negative and increasing was this. Okay, this negative and decreasing was, oh, negative and decreasing gives me, the, the, right here, that's this piece. Negative and increasing, it's the, the distance back to the pole gets smaller. So this is 3 pi over 2 to 11 pi over 6. And then this last little bit right here, this is that last little piece, this piece right here. Um, 
I definitely, when I taught this in class, I definitely did one color here and one color there, and I, I correspond the different colors between these intervals. Um, okay, so if it's positive and increasing, that means the distance is increasing. So this was this, um, this one right here is that first little, um, oh, where's some scratch paper? Okay, so this first little piece right here was when I, so I basically started here and I came all the way up there. So, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, that was my radius or my distance between the function and the origin was increasing from zero to pi over two and it looked something like that. Can you see what I'm doing? I think you can. Um, and then I was positive and decreasing from pi over two to seven pi over six, which got me to here. Okay, so that, that distance, I was getting, I had a, a larger radius and then it got smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until we got to zero. Um, and then the next piece, seven pi over six to three pi over two, it was negative and decreasing, which means that it's getting farther away. So it was increasing like this. That got me to three pi over two. Um, then from three pi over two to 11 pi over six, that's when it's coming back. It was negative and increasing, which tells me that the distance to the pole is decreasing. Negative, increasing, decreasing. Okay. Um, and then this last little bit was, was okay, pretend this has symmetry. I mean, I've done worse in my drawings, but there we go. From 11 pi over 6 back to 2 pi, I was getting farther away from the pole. So the distance away was increasing. Okay. Um, he gives us a suggestion. It's helpful to sketch the graph in rectangular um, so that we can see where things are increasing. Are they positive, negative, that sort of thing. Okay, so I have not looked at his um, lovely multiple choice. Um, on this one, so if I were to look at this one, I might say, okay, um, did he graph that one? No, I don't think he did. Okay, so this would be y equals negative 4 cosine x plus 2, if I rewrite that in the way that we're used to graphing it. Um, that means um, that I would have started at negative 4, but I went up to... So my midline is at two, and then I go up as high as six, and I do something like this. Okay, so, oop, doop, doop, doop. okay, um, this was the point pi six. So when I plug in pi, right? Yes, when I plug in pi, cosine of pi is negative one times negative four is positive four plus two is six. Um, this is zero comma negative two, and then we get back two pi, can you see what I'm doing? I think you can, two pi negative two, Okay, and then here was, this is 3 pi over 2, and we were at a positive 2, and here's pi over 2, and we're at a positive 2. And maybe I should find my zeros. Let's see what the, oh yeah, I should find my zeros. Um, I want to set this equation, negative 4 cosine x plus 2 equals 0. So that means cosine of x is equal to, I subtract 2, divide by negative 4 gives me a positive 1 half. Cosine equals a positive 1 half at pi over 3, and at 5 pi over 3. So this first one is pi over 3, the second one is 5. Does that make sense, 5 pi over 3? Yes, yes it does. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, okay, so now let's see. The distance, so which of the following statements is true? Okay, the distance is increasing for pi to pi over 5. Uh, the distance is increasing because it's positive and increasing. From pi... So 5 pi over 3, it's decreasing, so it was not increasing on that interval. The distance from pi over 3, which is here, to pi over 2, um, is it, the distance from the, the origin is increasing because it's negative and increasing. No, it's not increasing. It's negative and decreasing. It was This is true, but this is not. Okay, the distance is decreasing from pi, which is here, to 5 pi over 3 because it's positive and decreasing. Yes, that's true. I think that's what we're going to look at because it's decreasing, positive and decreasing. Um, decreasing uh, from pi, pi, pi over 3 to 2 pi because it's negative and decreasing. Negative and decreasing gives me increasing right here, so that, that's the problem. So this first one, the answer is C. Um, or what was his first? Oh, I guess we kind of already did example one, I forgot. Okay, example three. Um, oh, here's the curve. Uh, they tell us, oh, so this is a rose. This is a rose with four petals. And they ask us if the polar function is graphed um, from, here this ended at three pi over two, 
on which of the following intervals is the distance between the polar coordinates decreasing? Okay, so it's decreasing if it's positive and decreasing. So it would be decreasing here. Or if it's negative and increasing, it's decreasing here and positive and decreasing. Okay, so we're looking at, let's see if any of those um, are in his choices. That was not one of them. This is not one of them. Uh, 3 pi over 4 to pi. That looks like it's going to be the answer. Pi to 5 pi over 4 is not the one that we circled. So from 3 pi over 4, it's negative and increasing, which means that the distance is from the um, pole is decreasing. Okay, relative extrema. Basically, if it's changing from increasing or decreasing, increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing, um, then the function has a relative extrema. Okay, so consider this graph um, in the polar coordinate, which of the following statements is true? Okay, so we wanna know, well, our graph here, so I make graph the a rectangular, let's um, grab a piece of scratch paper. If I were to graph y is equal to two sine of two x, oh, I lied, negative two sine of two x plus one, then what have I done? Sine has gone up one, but I would go down first. So I come here, back to here, up to here, back. Um, and actually this would have been, but my period is now pi. So this, this is the point pi comma one. This is, well, this would be pi over four. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. Pi over four, negative one. This is pi over two, one. And this is three pi over four, three. So we're doing do, 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 something of that nature. Let's see if that is enough information to help us out. The graph has a relative minimum on the interval pi over three. So pi over, th okay, I'm thinking in a circle. Pi over three is here, pi over four is here. This pi over four, pi over three. Oh, pi over three to two, two pi over three. All that we can know on the unit circle that's between it is pi over two. Um, did I have a relative minimum there? No, I did not. Okay, so has a relative minimum on that interval because it changes from negative to positive. I mean, it does change from negative to positive, but that's what not that's not what gives us a relative minimum. Has a relative minimum from three two pi over three to pi, so two pi over three is going to be here to pi. Um, and I keep pointing to where you can't see me. Um, hi, I'm making a video. You missed the training. Huh? <laughs> I'm making a video. I, I'll talk to you later. Um, 2 pi over 3 is somewhere over here, and then pi is somewhere over here. So is there a relative minimum? I think it's a relative maximum on this interval. So let's see. We have a relative maximum on that interval because it changes from increasing to decreasing. I think the best answer is D. Okay. Average rate of, uh, you know what? Let's come back for the next video um, with average rate of change. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Like, subscribe, keep watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck to you.